Do you want to do introductions? Sure. So the introductions is this is Community Board 11's Transportation Committee meeting, which is Monday, February 7th, 2022. And we have an agenda to talk to about today. And we have some our committee members right here. We have Lisa and we have Christian and we have myself and we have some members from the public also out there in the audience. So we'll get everybody, <clears throat> we'll give everybody a chance to speak and we will move as quick as we can because I actually have an 830 hard stop. So we will do this in a proper and informative way. Okay. And we have Mr. Chris Kirker out there, who everybody knows, and we have our wonderful manager out there, Mr. Jeremy. Okay, with no further ado, we have an honored guest today. And our honored guest is Nicole Yearwood from the Lime East Scooter Company. Okay, we've had many, many conversations on these scooters from all the various, various companies that are out there doing this scooter business. Um, and I think before we go into questions, I would like uh, I would like uh, Nicole to introduce herself, say what she is here for, what her title is, and give her five ten minutes to give an overview of the Lime E Scooter Company. It is all yours, Nicole. Uh, good evening, and and thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, as you stated, my name is Nicole Yearwood. And I am uh, new to Lyme. I started about three weeks ago. My title is Senior Manager for Government Relations in New York. So I'm pretty new. Uh, I just came to introduce myself, um, let people know that I'm here. If they have questions, if anyone would like to partner with us to do any events, uh, I'm, I'm getting my feet wet and learning the ropes quickly. Uh, at Lyme, we actually had an event of First Riders um, Academy uh, in Co-op City just a few short weeks ago, and we'll be doing those at least once a month in the winter. And then, of course, as the weather gets warmer, we're going to be picking up with some activities uh, in our pilot zone, which consists of this community board. Uh, so I just want to come introduce myself. Uh, my, I'll share my email address. I'll put it in the chat, but it's Nicole, my first name, N-I-C-O-L-E dot Yearwood, which is my last name, Y-E-A-R-W-O-O-D at uh, L-I dot M-E. If anyone has any questions um, or anything to ask, um, I'm going to be working, um, and I work with Phil Jones, so we're going to be working together. Um, to ensure also that people are aware of our Lyme access program, which is our discount program uh, that people can use to rent our scooters and get around the pilot zone. So just doing that right now, again, learning the ropes, but here to answer any questions and to be a resource. If there's something I don't know, I can definitely go back and get the answer and come back uh, to another meeting at any time or share answers with the district manager. Thank so with you, that, Nicole. I will stop. Yes, you're welcome. Is it? Does, does anyone back. have anything to say? Any feedback? Because I can definitely take that right now. Sure, we have many, many questions, and I'm going to start. No, no, no. I'm going to go to Lisa first. Let Lisa go first. Lisa Soto, you go first because the odds are I have the same questions that you do. So let's go to Lisa first. Let's go to my committee members, and then we'll go to the public. Okay, Lisa, it's all yours. Um. Hi, uh, good to meet you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate, um, I think you are the first of um, any of these companies to come to us, at least in a while. So definitely appreciate you coming. Um, there have been a lot of concerns um, from the community regarding um, the both the placement of these scooters um, after people are done using them, as well as um, I guess the behavior of people who ride them on sidewalks and so on and so forth. So I guess the question, and I'm sure there's a lot on a lot of people's minds is what, um, have you heard this feedback? I'm sure you have. And what, um, what are you doing to help with the, with the situation of scooters kind of being 
placed everywhere and anywhere um and uh the the behavior of people who are riding these scooters so thank you so much for that question and actually even though i'm new that is something that i've heard and am aware of so one of the things is actually conducting our first ride academy i can tell you that um very important to us is you know rider safety as well as pedestrian safety and so we we always encourage riders you know i've done one first ride academy and i know and i've asked that question that is definitely part of the work that we do is to try to educate our riders on how to use the scooters safely where to actually place them so that they are not um, obstructing uh, pedestrian walkways crosswalks etc um, you know, I will say the few times that I have seen Lime scooters personally, a lot of times they have been kept on the side, but we work very hard to try to encourage our riders to do some to to make sure that these um, that the scooters are left in a space that is safe, that where it won't fall over again, will it will not obstruct um, pedestrians, will it will it will not um, I guess be you know located in crosswalks anything that obstructs the normal sidewalk flow that is what that is what we encourage people to do um i think that we also send some messages as well but i'll definitely check back with phil but that is part of what our first ride academies you know that's the goal is to make sure that we you know are making sure that riders are safe and also doing the right thing in placement um you know it's, it's hard to control, but we do our best to educate our riders to do to do the right thing. And so, I can definitely get more on that and come back as well. If there's have any- there been, mm -hmm. Have you guys had any, um, like what are the, the penalties or ramifications for people who are not, um, who are not following these rules and regulations? So that's a great question. And I would say, Lisa, right now, I don't know the exact um, penalties for that, um, where the, where the uh, scooters are placed, if they're not placed properly, but that's something that I can ask and follow up with you on if we have those penalties. Okay. Um, so basically penalties yeah, for that's, riders, that's, correct? Yes, for, for, the, for, the, for the riders, yes. Okay. And if you've received complaints about um well, i guess it might be hard to track if you have complaints about how they're riding but certainly you can track if a if a scooter is like left in a crosswalk or taking up a parking spot in the street or in the middle of a sidewalk i think those things are probably easy got for you guys to 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 track and um trace back to the riders so yes i think that um, I, is one of, I know, dozens of concerns that we have, but um, I'll let my, um, I'll let my colleagues from the board uh, continue with the questions. Kristen, you're on. I go next. I don't have uh, any questions at the moment. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Okay, so Nicole, we've, uh, we've had some positive and unfortunately we've had a lot of negative about these scooters. Lisa did a great job. Um, I think the concern is the safety. Who is riding these things? Who is riding these things on sidewalks? How old is the people or how young are the people riding these things? And in general, um, what is it doing for the community at large? Is it helping them get to work quicker? Is it just letting kids or teenagers, whatever, go on a joyride? I, I think we as a community look at it and when we see, and Lisa, I'm, not, I'm going to try not to repeat too much what Lisa said. We see one of these bikes upside down in the middle of the street. What we see in the middle of a snowstorm last week, did we lose her? We might have lost them. Are you there, Nicole? He's gone. No, I'm here. I'm Are here. Okay. Just something okay. with my video. Okay. I'm okay, here, no though. Problem. Okay. Or we see people driving these things during snow, during ice, so on and so forth. 
So I, 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 I can I answer a couple of those. Um, just again, in the short time I've been around. So one of the things is when there was the snowstorm, we actually pulled all of our scooters. We did not operate during that snowstorm. So you should not have seen anyone with a Lime scooter during the snowstorm, which was the weekend, I believe, of January 28th. So we, we pulled all of our scooters from the road. I think it was um, the snowstorm before, which wasn't as big. I think they said they saw them at least the beginning of the snowstorm. Okay. But okay, if you pulled it, that's a merit to you. That's great. That's great. Yes, no, we, we pulled all of our scooters for that major snowstorm. That's number one. Number two, you mentioned the age of the riders. So you actually have to be 18 or older in order to ride the scooters. Uh, we also do um, videos and training as well as a quiz. So unless you take all of the quizzes and complete the short training that we have within the app, you are not allowed to ride. So the first three rides are controlled. Uh, and when I say controlled, that means that in those first three rides, you can't go over, I believe it's 10 miles per hour. And then the second thing is, so that's, con that's con again, controlled by us and you can't ride at any time. So our scooters are available for people who have completed at least three rides. They're available 24 hours a day. If they have not completed three rides, the quizzes and the additional in-app training, they can only ride the scooters from sunup to sundown. And you have to be 18 years or older. You can no so there should be no teens, no children uh, riding those riding our scooters. Okay, so this is a form of Lisa's question. When they go, I don't know, on their first ride, do they have to sign something to say, thou shall not block a driveway, thou shall not go a certain amount of miles, you should not take it out of the district, you shouldn't pay for it, and then put a kid on it. I mean, I don't know if you would have a control on that. So do they I have mean, to... Go ahead, it's yours, Nicole, go. Yes, yes, no, absolutely. So what I would say to that is, of course, we have terms and conditions of use that we have people agree to. Of course, they would agree to it in the app. Sometimes there's a distinction between what people agree to and what actually happens, but that, you know, is most likely part of our terms and conditions. Have you found that people, I think this was brought up at one of the meetings, that people take the scooter and they park it in their garage or driveway. So this way for the next day, it's ready for them to go. They don't have to go to a corner. They don't have to go this, boom, out on the street they go. I have not heard that, so I can follow up on that. I've not heard that concern as yet. Okay. Okay, if you could follow up on that, that's good. Okay, I'm all questioned out. Uh, would anybody, oh, Debbie's here now. Debbie, do you have any questions about scooters? And uh, to present to Nicole. I don't really have a question, but I did hear you asking about the underage riders and the like double riding. And I've I've witnessed it myself. They have underage riders, and I've witnessed double riding. So something needs to be done about that. Okay, point well taken. Okay, anybody, thank you, Debbie. Anybody from the public out there or from our district manager's office that would have any questions for Nicole? And um, first hello. Person, yeah, hello. Black Santa Delgado, when, my, when, my, when may I speak? I'm sorry, I just woke up. When may I speak? Sure, go ahead. It's all Hi, yours, um, thank you, thank you so much, Chair. I'd like to say, make a quick state, um, statement before I go into our uh, question. My statement is that this e-scooter has not been a good, um, has not been beneficial to the community and regarding young riders. Not only have I seen young riders utilize these e-scooters, but I've actually seen them after school pedal them manually up to up the hill. Even when the scooters are off, they manually uh, pedal them up the hill and then ride them down in the middle of the sidewalk, in the middle of the street. And that's why my kids are under 10, 12 years old. And it's, it's not a, a good thing to have that can be freely accessed by um, people of young ages. And even those that are able to uh, use it through the app, they have themselves 
seem to be getting within the young teens between 14 to 18 years old, 17 years old. And they use it very reckless because they don't understand the rules of the road. I mean, they don't even have a license. So how would they understand uh, right of way, pedestrians, you know? And those are those that actually utilize the road. Most of them utilize the sidewalk. And we had an instance where um, residents had actually been injured slightly by these e-scooters because they were either spooked by them or they actually hit them and uh, had taken their names and they actually called DOT to report these incidents where DOT follows up on these um, incidents, I don't know. I mean, thankfully, no one has been actually injured or severely where they've been hospitalized for days or they're being fatally killed. But I guess we're waiting for that to happen before these issues are addressed. And um, and it's been, a, it's been a hazard because it's like now walking on the sidewalk is actually crossing the street nonstop because you have to look both ways, left and right, because these e-scooters are on the sidewalk coming from everywhere. And then, I, like I said, I saw kids mainly use these e-scooters. That's why you see them left behind. So even when the rider uh, um, parks, the these e-scooters in the cor correct uh, corrals or whether in the, uh, in the furniture zone, you have kids removing them and going on joyride manually and then leaving it all over the place. Um, this is not good for the Bronx because we don't have infrastructure and we don't have the, we're going from um, not 62 forever 62 because the kids that are using it are going to Popeyes and McDonald's and, and Starbucks. They're not using it to go to school. They're not using it to, to go to work. They're using it to, and actually we're getting fatter over here and that includes myself. But everyone's getting fatter over here and I'm healthier and and if they wanted something, they should have given us the, yes, uh, city bikes. And my question is to the uh, to the committee. What happened to the letter you were supposed to send to DOT? Because now DOT extended this program for two years without even getting any uh, feedback from us. I mean, they did some silly survey in some certain part, parts of the district, I call them, but only for the user as to how they like it. Because there's no problem with the e-scooter itself. It's a good it's a good equipment, but it's not, it doesn't fit well in this, in this neighborhood. So the, the survey they took was how people like using the, the e-scooter. Most people who use the e-scooter it, say it's easy to use. There's no problem with e-scooter. It's that it doesn't fit here in this area. So what happened to that letter that was supposed to be sent to DOT addressing the issues that we have with the e-scooters and why was it extended to two years with no public input, like the first year? Hello? So in answer to that, Rock, uh, Roxanne, is I was thinking about that. And I knew the speaker, we were tr trying to get speakers from all the companies, and I'm mm -hmm. going to continue to work on that, Roxanne. Now, mm -hmm. we have this company, we have the other companies, and then mm -hmm. after I get all the input, I wanted to write mm -hmm. one big letter, and hopefully now we have Nicole here. She's heard mm -hmm. our concerns, and I would say, and I never promise anything, Roxanne, but I'd say by the mm -hmm. next meeting, at least I'll know who's coming from the other companies. And I've heard rumors mm -hmm. about one company is pulling out and one company is pulling mm -hmm. in. So I'm not even sure who's in, who's out now. But I think, again, from the tone of Nicole, she is listening to us. And I have, before you, I think, dialed in. I've given her my mm -hmm. concern. And I agree with you. There's been a lot, and I said it before, there's been a lot of criticism. But if, in a way, we can make this work to benefit Community Board 11, I think we should give it a little bit of a shot. Not a year, not six months, but somewhere within the next month or two, we should try mm -hmm. this. I think that's okay. fair. I think that's just. No, I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just think that's fair. I think that's fair. I actually, off of what you said, I have another question for Nicole. You mentioned that you pulled all the bikes during the snowstorm, which is great. So there are people out there working for your company. For lack of a better word, is there any sort of line police out there that is going to listen to the concerns of Nicole, Lisa, whoever, Debbie spoke, that are just going out there and making spot checks and seeing these kids driving and see them going backwards on the street or an adult going backwards on the street. Is there anybody out there now or in the future that you contemplate to watch these actions? That's a question I would definitely have to take back to the team. We do have an operation staff, but I'm not 100% sure that they do spot checks, but that is something that I can ask I know that when we detect certain things, which is like if a vehicle is out of an area or something like that, I know that's something that our operations team, you know, monitors very closely and, and, and make sure to take care of those kinds of things. 
but I'm not 100% sure if someone is there just to kind of do spot checks on, you know, how people are riding and, and those type of activities. Okay. okay, so I would recommend to everybody that's on this phone call now, and this is with your permission, Nicole, I, I think the lime ones are the green ones. Make sure I'm right. Yes. The lime yes. Three, that makes sense. Lime is green. Okay. So if you see anything out there, we have Nicole's email address now. And I would say pile them up, send them to Nicole. If I see something, I'll take a picture and send it to Nicole. And then we will definitely have something to stand on. And then I'm sorry, Nicole, we'll put a little more pressure on you. But at least we'll show you live in action what we think should not be happening. And I absolutely believe, and I believe and, that I actually believe that's better than any letter in the world, but let's start there. And and I'd appreciate that. And if you do send me things, I, I'll definitely work and you know work with our team and see how we can rectify the issue. And I would also say before I close that um, you know, I would also love to work with the committee, uh, the board in general on uh, rider safety activities. Um, you know, it's harder in the winter to do these sorts of things, but definitely in the warmer months, probably starting in April, if we wanna work together to distribute helmets or just, you know, rider safety information, Excellent. anything that we could provide that you all can share with your networks, any way that we can work together. Cause the one thing I heard was that someone did say, it, you know, it's not the scooter itself. So we wanna just encourage you know, the riders to do the right thing, show them how to do the right thing and provide them with those tools. So if we can work together on that, I'd be happy. Thank you. That's great. Okay, next, Mr. Press. Uh, After Mr. Press is gonna be Mr. Contact Press. Yeah. Hi there, can oh? I ask one quick question? I'd like to say, regarding uh, sending complaints to the uh, companies, first of all, this falls on the Department of Transportation. They have a legal and moral responsibility to make sure not only are our roads safe, but our sidewalks. And they're the ones that put this without any, I walked away. And I don't agree with us having now. We have so much, I, I myself can't even sleep anymore because I'm busy doing volunteering, working, and personal things. Now I have to be taking pictures and, and reporting 100 incidents per, per week to a, a company. No, the thing is that this does not, there's nothing wrong with the companies. This does not fit in this district. We have the young population who are, are, don't have any um, a, a, a mentorship or are, are unfortunately that both parents are working and they're both they're mainly riding these e scooters everywhere. Then the people who are actually utilizing the app, they're riding on the sidewalk because they don't feel safe on the road. So the people that are at home now that are, are unsafe are pedestrians. And I'm not a disabled, I'm not a senior, I'm not a child. But I myself feel unsafe. And I feel bad for the as seniors if we're disabled because constantly they're being uh, uh, scared or even injured with these e scooters. They don't belong in this bro in this part of the Bronx. We don't have a population that can use this properly. This has to do more with how to use a school. This has to use unfortunately kids how to behave responsibly. Unfortunately, we don't have that in this area. We have to evolve. This might be better off in Riverdale. Unfortunately, it does not work here and it's going on and going on for too long. I'm not gonna spend my life uh, setting pictures of this company and they say, Oh, you know, thank you for letting us know and, and it's just passing the buck. I'm sorry, but that's my that's that's, that's my statement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Now, Press is next. Let's go to Mr. Press. Yes, uh, two items. One, the New York City has pa City Council has passed a law that all bikes and e-scooters must adhere to the traffic laws, as do motor vehicles. However, there is no way to tell who is riding an e-scooter because none of them have any plate markings on them. Uh, is there going to be a space to put a place plate marking on these scooters so that a police officer, if they see it, and the police officer has said that we can't do anything because we don't know what number of scooter they are. I mean, is there a way that Lyme is going to identify their scooters so when they go through red light cameras that a ticket can be issued for that scooter? Hello? Yes, I'm sorry about that. I had to unmute. So I'm not, I'm not aware of that policy or plans for that at this time. We do identify our scooters using a QR code, but of course that cannot be seen, um, you know, from a distance, but that is a question that I can ask. And my second point is that your scooters are so low in the back that they can just go a car, not knowing if a scooter turns in front of them can just go right over that little piece 
and kill the driver, actually, or the operator of that scooter. Is there an attempt to bring that scooter back up any higher? And the New York, the National Institute of Transportation Safety has forced cars to put uh, indicators, uh, red light indicators, that you can see them at eye level. The scooters are down less than one foot from the ground. Is there a way that those scooters can have an eye level type of a, a identification of a you know a light rather than down at the bottom of the scooter so that a moving vehicle can see them? For instance, a truck, a tractor trailer truck will just run right over these scooters and kill the person whoever is on it if it happens to them. I'm just saying that as a safety point. Okay, I don't drive a tractor trailer. All right, but they're very unsafe on the roads. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Press. Okay, next Ms. we can Ms. Finch. Hi, um, it's a very happy e-scooter rider here, rental e-scooter rider. I've ridden the line numerous times um, and I've enjoyed it. I think it's really fun. I use it sometimes, you know, it would be a 15 minute walk to the post office, to the bank, and with an e-scooter is just five minutes. And sometimes in a busy day, that's important. Um, I do think that a lot of complaints that people have about the e-scooters, if you download the app, even if you're not intending to actually ride the scooter yourself, if you download the app and examine it, play around with it, it would answer a lot of your concerns and questions. Um, about how the e-scooters are monitored, uh, a lot of information. There's a lot of information in the apps. Um, I think that a major reason that people ride on the sidewalks, myself included, is that we just don't have enough um, bike lanes and protected bike lanes in this part of the Bronx. It's so different. In Manhattan, where I work, um, you can go almost anywhere you want using bike lanes. Um, so I hope that the companies are putting pressure as well on the agencies and on the city to create more bike lanes and protected bike lanes in our part of the Bronx. Um, I do think that if a sidewalk is completely empty, I don't see why people shouldn't be able to ride e-scooters on the sidewalks. Uh, if they're empty, if there are no pedestrians on the sidewalks. Um, the roads are very rough and you really have to be alert when you're riding the e-scooter, you know, it could hit a rough patch on the road and that wouldn't be good, whereas the sidewalks are mostly very smooth. Um, when I see the e-scooters that are lying on their side, I just pick them up and park them properly. Um, I do think that the kickstands are very tricky and I don't think that the um, app really explains well, very well how to use the kickstands. So I, I do think that's a problem and that's why a lot of them fall over because people haven't set the kickstand correctly. Um, I think it would be great if you had more organized practice rides because the more you ride the more familiar you get and the more comfortable you get and the better rider you are, safer rider you are. Um, so I think when, you know, it, when we get to spring, if you could organize group practice rides, that would really be a great asset. Because um, if people are better, safer riders and feel more comfortable, uh, I think that would be, you know, free practice rides where you can just get on a scooter for free and ride them around. Uh, and I think that in terms of complaints about the e-scooters, it is often very hard to distinguish from, especially from a distance between privately owned e-scooters, people riding their own e-scooters and people riding the rental e-scooters. Um, so, you know, the apps do tell you, they do restrict you on the rental e-scooters from certain areas. Often the people who are, not doing the right thing are people who own their own e-scooters. Um, and I really think that e-scooters are here to stay. They're not gonna go away, whether it's rental or private. Um, 
so we have to learn to live with them. And I think that drivers are not used to having to keep an eye out for the e-scooters as they drive. Um, drivers have kind of been spoiled <laughs> into thinking they're the only ones on the road and all they have to worry about are other cars. Um, so, you know, driver education about e-scooters and bikes on the road would be a very good thing too, I think. You know, don't put it all on the e-scooter riders. The drivers have to do their share as well. Um, so on the whole, I'm a very happy e-scooter rider. I think it's a great program. Um, I do wish that we could have rental city bikes as well as e-scooters in the same area. Um, and last um, comment, I've noticed some problems with the dead zones on the e-scooters where you can't ride them. Like sometimes a dead zone will include an intersection where going one way through the intersection, you can't ride it on purpose. But the problem is then that if you're going the other way through the intersection, the e-scooter also dies on you. Um, so like around Pelham Parkway, Boston Road, White Plains Road, there are some of those dead zones in the intersection, um, which is kind of annoying. Um, but other than that, I'm enjoying the program. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. And I would just add to that the, the first ride academies are also part of the first ride academies are to facilitate and kind of show, you know, people how to ride. Uh, oddly enough, we did one in co-op in co-op city on January 28th, and we actually did show, you know, someone how to ride. So we did, we gave out six helmets and did we and we showed someone how to ride while the um while the snow was coming down. And we will be on um, Pelham, Park, Pelham Parkway and White Plains Road on February 16th in the afternoon. So we'll have the First Ride Academy there as well. So that's that's kind of the gist of the First Rider Academy is to discuss safety. You know, we, do, we did have scooters there, you know, to demo. So we were able to show people different things. So thank you for that idea. And we'll be doing more of those definitely in the spring. Yes, more please. Nicole, how did, people know about, how did people know about yeah. February 16th? Well, we just we just um we just decided to host it. So I will be sharing a flyer on the about the event on the 16th, but we just solidified it today. Okay, beautiful. I'll Thank get you. a flyer to the Cass. community board. Hot off the presses. Okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, so go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I'm a very satisfied e-scooter rider. Uh, I ride it frequently. My wife now rides it more than I do. Uh, so I'm very happy. I do second some of the comments that uh, Diana made regarding uh, lobbying DOT to put in more protected bike lanes. There are so many miles of protected bike lanes we were supposed to have last year that haven't even been started yet. Uh, so I'm hoping those all get completed this year. Uh, and I'm also hoping that uh, phase two of the pilot uh, starts sooner rather than later. Uh, the pilot did start pretty late last year. Uh, I was delayed by months, but I'm hoping that there's an early start for phase two. Now, my question is regarding, um, you did mention how uh, the service was shut down for the last storm. Uh, now, DO. T did tweet what time the service was to be shut down. Uh, I think the last time was 7 p.m. But I found that the three providers all shut down at different times. I think Lime shut down earlier. So I'm wondering what the coordination is there. I, I'm sure that's, you know, when you shut down your services at your own discretion. But is there any coordination to make sure all these services shut down at the same time? So there's no rider confusion. Yeah, so that's, um, Michael, thank you for that. And that's something I would have to um, circle back with the team on. Uh, I don't believe that we coordinated with other operators to shut down. It's, you know, we'll receive the request from DOT indicating that we need to, you know, remove our vehicles um, from, you know, from or terminate our operations. 
And so our efforts are to try to comply uh, with the DOT request, um, you know, as soon as we, you know, possibly can. It, it you know, as you can imagine, it would it takes some time uh, to get the 1,000, you know, or, or I think at the time we might have had fewer, but you know, maybe 500 scooters, you know, all you know, off the road from the from the pilot area. So I don't think that we coordinate it but we really work to comply with those DOT ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How many scooters do you have in District 11? Do you have any idea? No, I don't know how many we have specifically in District 11, no. Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that takes care of our audience. Nicole, I, we, I thank you for being here. Hi, Rabbi, can, I'm sorry, Rabbi, I have to say, this is a prime example I'm saying. So someone just said, I write it on the, sidewalk and I don't see any problem with it. That's exactly the problem. People see no problem writing these on the sidewalk. And even if the sidewalk is empty, you're really making a bad impression, a bad example to others. That's why we have sidewalks, um, sidewalks in the day with e-scooters. This is um, disgraceful how people feel like they can ride on the sidewalk because it makes them safe. It makes them feel safe. But the hell with us? I feel safe. I don't care if you feel safe. It's all about me. And that's the problem why we can't have these things in our community because the substance in this community. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The Thank you, Roxanne. Empty sidewalk. Okay. I said the empty sidewalk. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody. We thank again Nicole, and we have a lot of faith in you, Nicole. You'll get back to us on some of our questions, and we will do right for Community Board 11. Thank you, and good luck in your job. Good luck in your job. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I also placed um, my email address. Once again, my email address is in the chat. So if anyone had any questions they would like to send to me as well, um, and I can follow up on those. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. Okay, good. Nicole, you're dismissed. I don't, I don't think you have to listen to any of this other stuff. Okay, thank you again. Okay, so now we go uh, to, to item number three, which is the gallery session. And my friend, Mr. Kirka, will tell, do we have any speakers here for the gallery? Uh, not that we're registered, but go ahead. I mean, whoever wants to talk, it's fine. Okay. Anybody have anything else to say besides bicycles? Yes, I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't see who's, I don't mean to skip the phone, I'm calling from a phone. So okay. if anyone's ahead okay. of me, um, but otherwise... All right, I'm thank going you so much. Um, time you. I'm going to time you. Okay, I just like to. I thought, uh, I really want this community board to think the majority of people in this community do not like the e scooter. Even the council in March, a lot of good got injured by which fell off the e scooter. And most of these e scooters are shared. I, I, I'm part of Palm Park. I do the uh, cleanups. I'm out there. I'm not behind a Facebook page. Um, and I see how many of these e scooters are the ones that are shared. Very few are privately owned. And you don't see this nonsense in Tribeca or so forth. I mean, if this was something that was a luxury item, it would be used over there. The fact that it's being used here is being dumped on us. And it's a safety issue because I see these kids coming out of school and um, just taking, pedaling these um, e-scooters uh, manually and then riding them down the hill. I mean, if I was a parent, I, I, would, I would be frightened for their, uh, for their safety, but the parents don't know because they're busy working. This is a safety issue. They're not like, oh, I like it. I have fun. I don't see what the problem is. Uh, I enjoy it. It's not about you having fun. It's about everyone else. It's not just about you. So I have to think, we have to think about the safety of, I mean, just some people as far as defunding police and we're getting shot here left and right. So, you know, sometimes you have to ignore these type of people. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to say anything more from the gallery? I see a hand up from Ms. Diane. Ms. Finch. Yeah. Um, yes, I just um, had questions about whether we know yet who the new Bronx commissioner for the DOT is. Um, there are a couple of concerns in our area that we've been trying to get fixed. One is a stop sign that was installed, but there's no um, stop line painted on the street and there's no like large white stop painted on the street. So, and a lot of people don't see the stop. They don't notice the stop sign because it's new and it's kind of at an angle from the road. Okay, Ms. Finch, on that, on that I can answer. We don't know yet who's the commissioner, but at this time because of the cold, they don't paint anything on the roads. So, because for everything it has to be 40 degrees and up, as per okay. DOT. 
Um, there's also um, a street that we've been trying for years to get repaired. Um, it's a place where the curb is very low um, and it, the street is very high in the middle and then it slopes off to the side. And the result is that there's a sidewalk and a driveway in front of a private house that's permanently flooded. And then when it's cold, it's just an ice. It, it all ices over and you can't walk along the Which sidewalk. Is this? this is on Mace near Barker. And we uh, can, can you email us the exact address where, it, where it's located? Um, I have to look it up. Please. I could send it to me. I'll forward it to, to DOT and see what they're going to say. Yeah, I mean we've we've interacted with DOT numerous times about it, and they know of what it is, and they just don't do anything. And then I think the um, we're going to try it once more. If nothing was... happens, then it's going to be the other step is going to be you contact the media. Pardon. We're gonna try one more time with DOT. Okay. And if nothing happens, if we see nothing happens, then you know next step is gonna be the media. Right. I'm talking newspapers, channel yeah. twelve, channel one, whatever. Right. Call right. and says that in many times the way we tried, DOT is not yeah. responded. Right. So I guess okay. once it's gonna be in the media, then the new mayor can go and knock some 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 doors and say, Hey, what what you doing? Okay. And then so last send me is... the email of exactly where, where the location yes, is. Okay. And I prefer if you can put attach some pictures will be great. So at least you know I can oh, show okay. it to them. Okay. Um, and then um last but, question. I'm sorry, is... before but yeah, before that. Uh you have to put it in with three one one because no matter what they're gonna say if it's not Yes, uh, we've numerous people have done that. Yeah. And then if you have the old three one ones, attach them to the numbers, please. Pardon? If you have the old three one ones, if you can attach them on the email, the okay. numbers so it can kind of you know give us an upper hand. Okay, we'll okay, do all of that. Um, yeah. And then the last question is: um, We're working on plans to have a farmers market in Bronx Park East uh, near the Bronx Park East White Plains Road Bronxdale intersection, and. We need to arrange for parking on Sunday mornings for several hours for the farmer's trucks um, while the farmer's market is open. And for that, we need to get a permit from DOT. But we- Is it DOT or is it- Yeah, it's DOT. Parks, it comes gives to... the, parks gives the permit People. for the use of the park, which they've already, they're at work on that. They're going to do that. but. They can't give a permit for the parking that has to come from DOT. And we've kind of been held up because we don't have a Bronx commissioner. So. Okay, so write an email again. I mean, it's gonna come okay. a request from whoever is the head of this farmer's market. Right. With a little right. bit of synopsis, what exactly it's gonna be about it, meaning. Uh, uh, how many tracks up and down? I mean, of course, we cannot know the, the like, number of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but just you know, summarize it. Uh, describe okay. what what exactly this track is going to be from what time to what time and from one day to what day. And we forward it to whoever we have a contact with, the director okay. at this time, Mr. Cal. We'll send it and to him until. Uh, emails in through Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy and CC me, Chris. Both okay. Great. Okay, Ms. okay, Mr. Press, Mr. Press, please. Just to answer uh, Ms. Finch's uh, question here, as former vice chair of traffic transportation for Community Board 8, I believe you might have to fill out a street activity permit application for that because there are certain events that if you have it in the park and you need the street, it's a street activity permit that has to be filled out. Okay, just That's to what know. I said. That's from my Mr. experience. Press, because okay. it's the same thing that's occurring in front of Jacoby. Farmers mm -hmm. market over there, they have trucks parked, but they have a street activity permit. Right. It's already been passed by the mayor's office. And that is emphasizing a special permit that the community board doesn't have to, to vote on it. No, and, automatically. and there is a certain time limit that it has to be filed by 
and it can be up to one year in advance. Okay, whether it be Correct. six months or one year. Uh, so, Ms. Finch, you better get on that right away. Uh, That's why my I have second it up point. Tonight. Thank can you, Mr. Press, for this info. Can you wait for me to finish, please? Okay. My oh, second oh. point would be uh, Pelham Parkway westbound. Uh, now, from the bus stop to Boston Road and even beyond Boston Road, where it turns into Fordham Road, is a disaster. It's like a minefield. I complained about this a year ago when they finished putting in those new pipes on the ground. But nothing has been done. You don't have a Pelham Parkway task force to oversee this. Nobody's overseeing it. Apparently, the DOT isn't doing anything because it's Department of Design and Construction. Design and Construction is not doing anything because they're saying it's up to the contractor. Nobody's doing anything over there. When is that going to be fixed? Because people are getting flat tires. They're, they're breaking their cars. And I'd let the city know that if any cars are damaged, it is the city responsibility now. Okay, when Mr. Press, can I ask you something? Have you yes. have you contacted Miss Rojas since she is the liaison for that? She's useless. She's useless. Now that we don't because have a task force, all the people, useless. all the she's people lying. that she's been dealing. She Mr. said, Mr. Press, that's the... Chris, she said they didn't know that the gas line was coming through Pelham Parkway when at one of our last meetings they said we have to finish the construction of the parkway before the gas line comes in. They knew about it. Okay, so she's useless. She's lying. She's just a worker for the contractor. She's not with the city. And I'm sorry if I have to put it that way. All right. Uh, but she's not a board. I mean, that surprises me because she's very responsive to everybody that, you know, has been in contact with her. Obviously, the work is not being done. Other members of this community have complained about her. Also, I mean, I'm not the only one, but this street is not getting done. It's been like this for almost a year. And this is a major roadway. This is Pelham Parkway westbound. That is a disaster area full of potholes and it's just sitting there. They've decreased the two lanes by putting hydrants on both sides. Uh, and you're going to be down to two lanes when the bus stop is back there. It is a disaster. There is no oversight on it. The committee, the Pelham Parkway, Mr. Chair, the Pelham Parkway Task Force needs to be put back into shape. All right, and that's it. Anyway, I'm going. I'm going to forward all this information to Miss Ross, and let's see what's going to be their response. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Press. And Larry, 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 Larry sixty-eight three three one. Yeah, Chris. I for some reason this thing wouldn't put my name in. Uh, I just want to follow up on what okay. Diana was saying about the uh, street that floods. News Twelve did an, an article on this a couple of years back. They did a actual News Twelve was actually there. Uh, I spoke to Navarro several times also, and he said that uh, a possibility they'd have to do a study on a, a storm drain. And I asked, uh, I sent a note, uh, email to Jeremy, and then I haven't heard back on how to reach out to DOT on a study for a storm drain. But this was documented on News 12. Okay, Cake, is it possible, please? I mean, uh, this is Larry. I, I hope your yes. name is Larry. I'm yes, sorry. Uh, yep, oh. you got me. Can you, I'll look for, I'll can look for you it. Yeah, please email it to me so at least I, I can be aware what's going on. I mean, uh, it was mentioned Mace between Burke? Mace Avenue. Yes, yeah, Mace Avenue, just off the corner of Walker Avenue. Walker. Well, yeah, it's westbound. Okay. Just, before you get yeah, to, before you get to the and park. If you have, yeah, if you have, I know where it is, I think. It's, it's right to me, all, right. I, it's I know it's a private all. house and it gets very because I drive often over there. I mean, yep, instead of taking exactly. Anderson, I go through Mace. Yeah, and, and right before, right. You go, before we go Across to Bronx, the streets from the, uh, the site where they were doing construction. Do me a favor. If you can find the, 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 the news 12, yeah, I'll look for it. I'll look for it. And paste it to me the, the link and anything that you have, even an email that you sent to Jeremy, resend it to me, yes. please. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, okay. that takes care of our gallery session. I believe everybody's spoken. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have some old business to talk about? Going once, twice, three times. Thank you. New business. Well, there's two big new business ones. First one is something I got from Jeremy a few hours ago that a whole bunch of politicians have signed a letter to the governor to try on the subways due to the recent recent tragedies on the subways to try to find funding 
to build enclosures on each subway station. And many, many signed that in the Bronx and uh, that is a development. Will that happen? I can't tell you, but I think, you know, it's tra tragic that we even have to think of something like that, but there's definitely a push to make that happen. Uh, number two is on the electronic vehicle charging station at the White Plains Road. Um, any comments from anybody on that? Chris, you want to say something about it besides that they want to do it? Uh, it's right on our, our, right at the agenda. If you click on our website, it's addendum number two, if I'm wrong. As it says, and it shows where exactly it's located in Wet Plains parking field. That's where it says about New York City DOT uh, EV, I mean, electric, ele electrical vehicles being fast charged. And does it take away spots? And also, or not? Uh, not that I know of, but also we have attached an addendum number one, the email that we received from DOT in which describes where exactly. Okay. And it says as part of DOT of efforts to encourage the adoption of electric vehicles. New York City right. DOT is creating a network of publicly accessible fast charging hubs in city citywide. Okay. And as part of this initiative, four DC fast charges and two level two charges will be installed at DOT's municipal lot on Wet Pens Road. So it's going to be probably on Moran Place, if I'm not wrong, somewhere in that area. It's uh, the, the the public uh, parking facility over there in Wet Plains Road by Moran Place. Okay. That's going to be the location. Okay. So it's guess, I guess it's good for That's people on Community Board 11 that have electronic vehicles and hopefully we'll lower for yes. them to all have electronic yes. vehicles. Okay. I don't see a problem. Mr. Press, I see your hand. Go ahead. Yes, it says there's going to be four spots for fast charging and two spots for the other charges. So that means six spots are not going to be allowed for any other vehicles, only electronic vehicles that are charging. Now, where do people, right. how long are they going to be charging at these stations and what are they going to be doing in between? Is it overnight? Is it for the subway that you go downtown and then come home at work? Because I don't see a subway station near there. Or is it for shopping on White Plains Road, which half the stores are closed? So I, you know, it's a good idea, yes, if it's going to be overnight for the residents, uh, but I don't see how it's going to help the area. It's only taking six spots away. And Mr. Chair, this is the newly redesigned parking area that uh, uh, the former commissioner spoke of when he came to our board uh, about six months ago, that they were redesigning it, that they were closing off entrances, they were making it only, you can only enter in one spot and exit in another, and you couldn't go through it anymore because they were putting cement uh, blocks around it so you couldn't. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's fine if it's going to be, in, you know, Control. all over the Bronx, but this is the only spot in the Bronx it's going to be. Right. Okay, I think well, the time I have to find out a little more about this. If there's a limit on it, yeah. and if one guy is just going to make it his own personal charging station, that doesn't sound too cool to me. Right. So I think we have to find uh, out. We, we, we can find more information. Yeah, we can find more information from DOT when it comes to that matter. Okay, so we'll bring that back if we have anything to say about it by the next board meeting or by the next committee meeting in March. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, once, twice, three, have a safe, quiet evening. Enjoy the warm weather the rest of the week. And we will see you all very soon. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everybody. Time it's 8.24 p.m. And I'm close, turning off the recording. Well, I hope, yeah. And have a good night, everybody. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much.